due to challenges bedeviling the sector. He began with three acres in 2018 and has since expanded to the acreage under passion fruit to 14. Kati imetoshia hile vizuri, tunapatanga kilo ilifu moja miampilo kwa eka. Na usanga kwa kilo 90 bop, sasingine, sasingine na kujanga mpaka 10 bop. Kulingana na soko wenye hiko. He has extended his market to Uganda in search of better prices. Kenya kidogo na onanga soko yaka ikuangi mzuri, jukiona soko ya Uganda, Another group of youths involved in passion fruit farming in Nigeria, was in Gishu, is also reaping big from the venture. For passion fruit, to now we to get sharp butter. To end it, to make it come a cup lot. Do to change. With the youth in agribusiness, basically for passion fruit value chain alone, supporting 120 youth group that's anticipating to have a very high volume of production. We support youth. Uh, through um, training them, get access to jobs, and also uh, become entrepreneurs. And as the country marks Youth Skills Day, Rono has a message of advice to his fellow youth searching for employment. Tutafute njia badala ya kufanya kazi ya farming. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV. What an amazing story of a class four dropout who now exports his passion fruit harvest all the way to Uganda. That amazing story, of course, of business and not just business, but also agribusiness. But that's what we want to talk about this morning, starting and growing a business. It's what we, what we all want to do. Only a few of us manage to do it. And even among those who can do it, some of those businesses die really early. So what's going on? We want to talk about starting and growing a successful business in Kenya. Allow me to introduce the people who will help us delve into this discussion this morning. Joining me in studio, Jan Okonji is a startup expert at Sandbox here in Nairobi. Good morning, Jan, and welcome to the Good show. Good morning, Victor. Karibu sana. Also joining us this morning is Rumenia Konyi. is the founder of Koreema Agrofoods. Good morning, Rumenia. Karibu sana. And joining us online this morning is Frida Winga. She's the advisor for Passion to Profit, that is Passion Profit. Good morning, Frida Karibu Konye Show. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. All right. And we want you to be part of this conversation as well. We want you to engage us this morning. We ask you, what do you think, uh, what, what does it take to run a, start and run a successful business in Kenya? What does it take to start and run a successful and profitable business in Kenya? You can tweet us at NTV Kenya and at Victor Kiprop underscore. Make sure you use the hashtag new normal so that we can see all the tweets that you send us. You can also send your feedback, by the way, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, literally every other social media platform where we're streaming live at the moment. And if you're not on social media, you surely have a mobile phone and you can call in on the numbers that will be below your screen shortly and be part of this conversation. But for now, let me start this conversation with the two gentlemen in the studio. And I'll start with you, Jan. Clearly, it's not a walk in the park. But the journey has to start somewhere. And for many people, it starts with having the idea. Yep. Talk to us. Thanks, Victor. Um, I, I was driving here, I was thinking, of, when, on my drive here, I was thinking about the best analogy or symbolism I can use for uh, business, mm -hmm. for people to basically understand what this is. I think we've made it so complex. And the concept of business is very simple. Yeah. Running a business isn't, but mm -hmm. the concept is very simple, really. And uh, uh, let me use, uh, what's the most popular food at the moment in Kenya? Avocado. Oh. A lot of <laughs> Thank you for using Trending on avocados. So okay. uh, imagine an avocado uh, fruit. Mm -hmm. and uh, It's like basically three parts. There's mm -hmm. the out, outward bit, which is uh, the husk or, you know, the skin, mm -hmm. black part. And the flesh. Then there's the flesh. That's the second bit. And there's the, the, seed, the seed in the middle. And if you look at business in that aspect, you can look at it in those three areas. The seed really symbolizes the most important part of a business, right? I mean, uh, and this is not the customer, it's not the product, it's not mm -hmm. the solution. Surprise, surprise, the most important part of a business is the entrepreneur. And, and that seed uh, is really what about the entrepreneur, the self-awareness, the discipline, the vision, the mission, the backstory of the entrepreneur, that's the seed. Mm -hmm. uh, the flesh is really the things you have to do as an entrepreneur or a business person so that you succeed, right? And uh, for simplicity's sake, I just thought of five Ps that we can apply. What are the things you have to do every single day as, a, as an entrepreneur? What are the five things you need to focus on 
Uh, the first one is your profile. You know, when I Google Victor uh, or Romania or Frida, what comes up on Google, what comes up on the search, the one, mm -hmm. two pages, is it something that relates to your business? So, mm -hmm. so that's your profile. Uh, the second thing, of course, is your product. Uh, that thing that you have that will offer a particular solution yeah. to a specific demograph. And then, of course, the pitch. The pitch is how you, uh, how you help people understand what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. how you get their buy-in. And then after that, of course, is the publishing. So we have all this stuff, but how do we get it out there? How do mm -hmm. we distribute the content, whether it's eBooks, whether it's uh, uh, social media marketing, whatever it is, uh, there's the publishing aspect. And then the last most crucial bit is partnership, right? So uh, for instance, myself, I have my yeah. own company, Business Growth Solutions, but I've partnered with the Sandbox. Mm -hmm. That's a Pan-African uh, you know, growth accelerator yeah. company. And, and I've used that so that I can grow my business in turn. So if you look at those five things, that's the flesh. The outward bit now are the supporting structures of a business. Mm -hmm. What are these? These are things like accounting, sales, marketing, uh, you know, IT, HR, customer experience. And these things are very important in of themselves. The challenge with this stuff is uh, on the husk is this is stuff you can learn. This is stuff which uh, is not based on the soul of the entrepreneur. Yeah important as they may be. And when we step out to do business, what we do, rather than focusing on the seed or the flesh, we tend to focus on those supporting structures. Okay. Yeah. And this is part of the reason why 75% of businesses fail within their first three years. Even with funding, 75% of businesses that get funding fail. Uh, so the reason being, the, there's no holistic approach towards business. Okay. Yeah. Allow me to bring in Frida at this point because, uh, I mean, uh, Yana has really literally taken us into the, uh, the whole um, skeleton of it all. But even before we get there, for anyone like myself, you, every day you're thinking, I really want to start my business. I really, really, really want to start my business. This year comes, the next year comes, the other year comes, and you haven't even moved one finger. But let's start with, you need to have the idea, first of all, uh, and settle on it before you think of actually going into it, Frida. Oh, wow. Thank you very much, uh, Kipro. Um, I think you need to, of course, you need to have an idea, but I recommend an idea that is born out of your passion, mm -hmm. because if it is an idea that is born out of your passion, you're going to be more resilient in ensuring that you support, uh, you support the execution of it. And just to add on to what Jan has said there, uh, it's interesting that he has five Ps. I have two more Ps I wanted to add, which is one. <laughs> having the passion and the passion is that thing that you enjoy doing but it's something that you enjoy doing that other people need because many times people are stuck up in i enjoy doing this and that's great but who really cares so the first thing is that you enjoy doing it people need it people are willing to pay for it so number uh, one p i'll add there is having the passion it mm -hmm. gives you the resilience it helps you do something that you love and enjoy because there's no need setting a business venture that you're, you you're not excited about the other p is the value proposition and probably uh, that's what jan uh, calls the pitch the value proposition this passion that you have how is it going to help people? And how is it going to help people do two things? One, avoid a pain, because everybody has a pain they're trying to avoid. And people getting into business are trying to avoid the pain of being broke, trying to avoid the pain of going to a job they don't like, mm -hmm. trying to avoid the pain of doing something that's not giving them pleasure. So what is the value proposition or the promise to avoid the pain and achieve a certain pleasure? Okay. So that helps. That helps you connect with the with the people and of course the profit all right because at passion profit we say be patient for growth i mean be patient for growth but uh, impatient for profit because many times we are told that it's going to take three years to break even and yes there's that theory but at passion profit we teach profit first we show you how to set up a, a savings and profit system to help you make profit from every sale Frida, now that you've mentioned it, it's, it's something that many people struggle with sometimes because on one hand, you really have what's, what you are passionate in. Let's say it's, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate in farming, so I really want to go into agriculture. But in the market, there's so much talk about, let's say, the quail business or, or chicken rearing. <laughs> they say that's where the money is. And I'm just wondering, should I go for my passion, which most people don't talk about the profit margins, by the way, or should I go for what is trending currently in the market, which is, is it quail business or chicken or anything? Uh, 
I, I, I steer a clear from things that are trending because you don't know all the information. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do a research. It's important to find out one. I believe in doing things that I love and enjoy. So I stick with passion, Kabisa. And uh, so but when it comes is, to why, want I, the money, thing is, why I used, of course, I want the money <laughs> and my passion is going to give me money. Why yeah. would God give me something that is not going to generate income? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We must remember that. All these things are connected to a higher being who has given us these skills, who has given us these desires, who is creating these people who have the desires. So any desire I have, somebody has a side that is going to match to this desire and that person is going to be willing and able to pay. Yeah. So my big role is to find out, well, this thing that I have, who needs it? All right. And I like that it starts with me. So it's not about outside. It starts with me. What am I willing and able to do? And then what is needed out there that can align with what I am willing and able to do and who is able to pay for it. If you make that match, you will make the money and you'll also be happy. All right. Allow me to bring in Rumenia at this point. It's not about what is trending. Okay. <laughs> Allow me. me to bring in Rumenia at this point. Rumenia, so clearly, as, as Frida says, you can follow your passion and you can go and you can make sure that passion now delivers the profits that you're looking for. But for many people like myself, the challenge sometimes is taking that first step. You plan for too long, you aim for too long, you prepare for too long, and sometimes you realize, I could have just begun this business a year ago. Talk to us about what you do and your experience taking that first step into uh, the world of business. Uh, basically, Victor, I went into agribusiness completely. And, uh -huh. um, this is an idea that was born to me uh, way back in college. Mm -hmm. I finished college a bit earlier, at around when I was 19 years old. That mm -hmm. was seven, eight years ago. I'm 27 now. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was completing college, in as much as it was a different profession altogether, I went into law, but I had a passion in agribusiness. Uh, as soon as I was leaving that door with my, at my final exams, yeah. I knew what I wanted to go into. And um, having been brought... Uh, born and brought up in Baringo, mm -hmm. uh, I went straight to the products that I thought they were near to me and mm -hmm. I was uh, passionate about them. That I went to beekeeping and goat business mm -hmm. first. And um, I went in, into it as a, um, as a meat vend vendor, Cam Hawker, mm -hmm. that was seven years ago, that has grown to a company and to a group of companies in a period of seven to eight years. It has been a journey with um, many experiences. And um, it really, I've really gone through it practically. But you don't sound like you struggle to take that first step, which is m what many people actually out there struggle with. I did, really. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, the moment I was leaving that door, that class, saying that these want to go to, to do, I had the whole idea set up, but armed with my 3,005 shillings, yeah. 3,500 shillings that I had saved. That's where I started. Yeah. With no loan, nothing else. Mm -hmm. okay. Just the idea and geared and focused to it. Maybe I can bring in, yeah, 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 and that's where we struggle with most sometimes, and it's because of the doubt, the self-doubt that we have inside, oh my God, am I going to be successful? Will this work, will this? How do we beat that self-doubt and take that uh, fast step without, of course, going into business, as they would say, blindly? Yeah, so thanks, Vic. I mean, uh, it's, it's back to the avocado seed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Self-awareness and knowing yourself, and the easiest response to that is just start, right? just start uh we, we we tend to have all the excuses why we can't start what if we fail what if it doesn't make money uh i have other things to do all of these are excuses they are valid yeah but that doesn't mean that doesn't actually uh give you any through pass for not having to actually uh, run your business mm -hmm. if you have a passion just like Romania go ahead and do it. Do it today. Uh, register your business. Uh, go on eCitizen. Open a Facebook page. Uh, start posting. Open an Instagram page. There's absolutely no excuse for not starting a business if you feel that's within you and this is what you've been called to do. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe, Fred, how do, how do we beat then that spirit, and, and, I, and I think Ian has already touched on it, but the, the, the spirit of pro pro procrastination is what many people struggle with because you say, you know what, I'm going to do it on the 1st of January, 2021. 2021 comes and then you push, you say, actually, 2022, and then you procrastinate, and then before you know it, it's five years since you were meant to start the business. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I'm laughing is because there's a saying that's coming to my mind as you're speaking. Yeah. Procrastination is a sign that um, 
you don't have a bigger motivation and a bigger motivation why are you starting the business many people are starting business today because there's no work and if there's no work you need to earn and for you to earn you need to sell something so you're either going to sell mutumba you're going to you're going to make chapati you're going to find something to do so we are not uh, entrepreneurs we are being forced to go into business to earn money yeah. so those that person that is procrastinating i want to say victor hananja they are not hungry all right because <laughs> hunger will <laughs> hunger will provoke you yeah <laughs> come on hunanja they somehow you're getting that money you can mm-hmm. procrastinate but when you don't have money you will think very fast because if you don't work you will not eat all right That's and it comes with some peer pre- pressure if you can allow me to interrupt you it also comes with some peer pressure because you know what i i don't really have any motivation for starting i just saw Romania started his business is doing very well and i also want to do very well so you know what i want to start a business and before you know it they're like quail business is trending you're about to start they're like oh no 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 it's actually barber shop before you you're about and, to buy the equi- <laughs> barber equipment they're like no 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 it's agri business and and that's true kipro but you see the thing is we need to understand just like we go to school because we, we have, we've been told go to school work hard get a job mm-hmm. so also if you're going to start a business find the appropriate help that's why we have people like journal conchi we have the sandbox we have passion profit and different organizations so you don't have to hack it alone you don't have to struggle us guys have struggled i've been i started my first business when i was 19 i struggled why should somebody else struggle look at who is doing business who are the consultants in this space who have they helped you don't have to walk alone walking alone is a choice struggling mm-hmm. is a choice there's enough people who have done businesses and failed and are doing well that we should not be having any more failures at all so the person failing by just looking around and watching one thing or the other it's a choice we don't need to be failing anymore mm-hmm. there's enough help in the country mm-hmm. yeah and allow me to come back to you because really there, there are a thousand and one sectors here and 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 sometimes we 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 wonder which which sector should i go to should i go to agriculture should we go to agri business he mentioned that he went for the things that were close to him which is uh, what would practically be uh, possible in his uh, area but there are a thousand and one how do i know which sector should i go to for instance i'm in media so you would think maybe i can start a business in an area that i'm more i have contacts and all that but someone else will tell you come on no what this is where the money is go for this yeah How do I know which sector to go to? That's a that's a good question. I mean, first of all, uh let me just go back and we talk about trends. Yeah. Uh and uh, I totally the quail ag- thing. The quail thing. I totally <laughs> or the avocados or whatever is trending. I totally agree with uh, Frida. If you go into agri business because it's the hot thing right now, mm-hmm. you can't compete with Romania. I mean, this this guy left said 10 years, right? 10 He's years ago for 7 years? 7 years. Yeah. Seven years. So you there's no way that you'll compete and of course th- what you're not seeing is what's beneath the iceberg the yeah. challenges that he's had to go through to get to where he's gotten mm-hmm. and uh, those are really barriers uh, to entry to you let me just give specific statistics there's something called the magnetic mean globally every biashara in mm-hmm. the world yeah. is fighting for at least $100 a day that's about 10k Mm-hmm. a day which roughly works to 250,000 shillings in a month that's that's when your business is doing that you can say uh, at least yeah so if uh, this 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 is okay that 100 dollars per day that's that's an okay figure the challenge is 10 years ago and i know we're talking about the new normal but the new normal has been around for a minute mm-hmm. uh, 2010 uh, when the i think world population is about 6 plus uh, billion people yeah there are only 20% of those were online right okay fast forward to 2020 that number has jumped to 60% of the world population has gone online mm-hmm. so what this means is that your idea is hardly unique and this means that there's going to be more competition and this means that if you do jump on a trend the possibility of you really breaking through that trend <coughs> is difficult mm-hmm. so back to your earlier question yeah. what we should look at is the what we call the white space where not so many people are there finding your passion does take time sometimes it's a marriage of you know two different ideas and then wow this is what i can do okay i can mm-hmm. do media but i can also do this and if i combine them i come up with a unique product or i come up with a unique way of doing something which mm-hmm. is already in the market and uh the easiest way of doing this well there are two ways one way is trial and error and trying and trying until you finally find out what you're interested in yeah. by which time of course you have lost money and all this but the other way which is the most direct and which frida mentioned earlier was get a mentor you know there's like it's the stats are there mm-hmm. 34 to 40% uh, 
chance of success in business if you have a mentor or a coach. Okay. Um, oh, I can't afford Frida or Jan or Romania. That's perfectly okay. Go to YouTube and there are mentors there. You can follow people. You can get inspiration from people. Yeah. Rather than being on Netflix all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Romania, the, the reason why uh, Frida, the reason why Frida was insisting on passion is sometimes you go into this thing and it doesn't immediately work out, and it could take you two, three years before you actually to start uh, to see profits or to start to see progress. Maybe how was it like for you? Uh, at the start, it wasn't easy because uh, transitioning all that proce process. In, in fact, even for the closest people, at the time when I was starting, I think uh, it was very difficult to convince even to my closest family members. Mm -hmm. that I think uh, I'm right about this. I mean, because mm -hmm. for most of them, I was meant to be uh, in legal practice, but mm -hmm. I told them, no, I have a passion in this. Surely, umeenda law mia katano ukuje uze nyama kwa butchery. So uh, I told them, I think, this is what I'm going to do. Um, it wasn't easy. It's been mm -hmm. a challenging uh, terrain because you could uh, the pressure is too much, especially from the peer, I mean, the guys, you, the studies you've done, I mean, but I was focused. This is what I wanted to do. Yeah. How long did it take you to maybe uh, see progress and, and decide, by the way, me, I'm going to stay with this business for the long run? Every day, every day has been a progress. Because mm -hmm. having starting, as I told you, as a meat vendor, come Oka to a company, to a group of companies, because nowadays I no longer deal with meat and honey only. Mm -hmm. I went to wheat farming, I went to bull farting program, I went to chicken, and what not. I mean, it is one thing grows another one, another one grows another one. It's, it's a learning progress. Yeah. yeah. What is the biggest thing that shocked you uh, that you didn't know about the business world that you learned immediately, you got into business, and you're like, wow, this is how it is? The reality of having, thinking about it, and, and I mean, with the competition <coughs> coming in, and the reality in it that you need to invent you need to uh, keep the pace with time mm -hmm. and the trends as you said earlier the, uh, the technology aspect and, and what at not I mean it's something that you keep on getting new challenges every every now and then did it at any point occur to feel to you like it would be some work in the park in any way I didn't expect to be working in the park because uh, um, my family has been in business for some time as in as much as the in their small ways mm -hmm. I mean that culture was inculcated to me because when I was in high school, even in primary school, whenever I could finish school in a holiday, I could maybe run in a small hotel somewhere and a small shop at home. That's where it started. Okay. Yeah. Frida, let me bring you on the issue of research because for many people, research is actually what allows you to understand the market you're going into, to understand the legal regime, the taxation regime, the challenges, the gap in the market, uh, the opportunity that you can take advantage. But for most of us, we overlook that research bit and we're like, that's where I'm going into. Of course, we, many people overlook the value of research and research can be as simple as, um, especially now that we have social media, we have all this access to people, research can be as simple as uh, putting out information out there to see how people will respond to it and and knowing very quickly if this is something people will like or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe likening a business to the, a walk in the park is not a good idea because when you're walking in the park, you're walking alone. And when you're going to run a business, you need a mindset. First, you need a vision. You need to, what, you need to be clear on what are you trying to do to make the future better, all right? And the future better, either it is more money or more food on your table, there has to be something bigger that is uh, driving you. So when we liken it to a walk in the park or begin to give people the notion that there are some businesses that are a walk in the park, we are already misleading people. So it really starts with our mindset, really thinking, where am I now? Where do I want to be? And normally starting a business is because you need more money in your life. Mm -hmm. So how much more money do you need? And what are you willing and able to do to get this money? So when we talk about passion, we have a process that we help you figure out what your passion is. We call it going under your skin. Because by the time you're thinking of generating a revenue out of a passion venture, you have been around. You've probably gone to school. You have worked. You have experience and exposure in different sectors. You have a network. So we use this process to help you think through what's your passion, what's your proficiency, what kind of partners are you going to need. Because for us, the big thing is helping you ensure that you're creating 
work that you will enjoy and the life that you know you'll enjoy also so that you're not going back to the eight to five thing that doesn't give you joy and it's not for everyone let's understand that there are different kinds of businesses for different people so it goes back to that seed that jan was talking about what is in your heart what is in your mind what are you trying to do so there's no one size fits all there's no one walk in the path no one walk in the path yeah. it's a it's a mixture of different things going on it's a mixture of different dynamics but the first thing as a human being why do you want to start a business where have you been all right who is in the space that has started a business that you can talk to you don't need to come to a frida or a jan you need to have a network of people that look like the person you want to be that you can talk to. okay so, all right doing a business in isolation is a recipe for trouble all right to you Remember, we asked you to be part of this conversation as well. We asked you know, a question of the day. What do you think, what does it take to run a successful business in Kenya? What do you think it takes to run a successful business in Kenya? If we can get to see what some of you have been saying on social media. Let's start with Margaret Ingato who says, I think I should, it should be what will take in the future to start and run a profitable business in Kenya. For now, it is grace and that's keeping Kenyans through We Are Hopeful. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, we have Voke Bro says, do research on what commodities have bigger profit margin and you can offer them at a lower cost. Have passion, patience, hard work, and cons good con customer service, and you will enjoy your profits. Thank you, Voke. Um, hmm. Dan Kiprop Idea says, positive attitude, any amount in terms of capital, you are good to go. It raises a very good uh, issue of capital, and we'll be coming back to it. Uh, um, AMHSC says capital ideas and effort. Thank you. Prince Pius de France says number one idea, number two plan, number three capital, number four target, number five location, number six human stroke machine power, number seven that makes it a difference is what makes a difference is money discipline. Sikutumia Mbesha Vibaya. Thank you. And we have Moses Baristo says profitable businesses in Kenya is in. Profitable business and Kenya in one sentence. <laughs> Majabu. <laughs> yeah, Fred Juma says you need to have the following paraphernalia: measures in which um, measures in place, identify the business you want to do, visit one or two people with the same business, but in different locations, do a feasibility study, ask them how they came into existence, the setbacks, and how they bounced back to life. Thank you, Fred. Gabriel Joachim Wandera says, financial resources and enterprise management skills. Thank you. And we have Transicio Chizo says, you only need consistency. Others will follow. Clearly, um, the responses are varied. And finally, Miriam says, a registered company, a company pin, tax compliance, business capital, God, depend on him, follow all his principles, sell from a shop, a car boot, online or at home, suppliers and customers. Thank you. Uh, Miriam. <clears throat> and let me come back to you, Jan, on this point, because one of the things we have not touched on, and I think uh, we've seen part of the feedback talk about, is the capital. So I really am ready. I've done the research like Romania has, and, and as Frida has advised, I have settled on one idea. I want to do, let's say, a barber shop, but it needs 300000 to start it up. Where do I get that money? So directly, you don't need 300000 you what don't, do you mean? You don't, need, you don't need money, Vic, to start a business. You, you, you do need you know money. That's to, a lie. That has do, to be a you lie. You do need money to sustain the business. Mm -hmm. But to start, and this is the thing that's blocking so many people, they're waiting to get that money to mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. And they never start. Have your idea out. Have one customer. Have 1K, 2K, 10K, whatever it is. Proof, have a proof of concept. Have some traction. And then that can be the basis for getting money. No one is just going to give you money based on this grand idea you have. And, and, and the thing about business, business is a, it's a beautiful thing. It pays you in proportion to the problems you solve. It was never about the product. It's about the problem you're solving. So if you look at Romania, for instance, the reason that he's uh, variating and doing all this is because there's a need that he's, he's solving. And mm -hmm. he's done research into that. You want to be successful. Don't focus on the capital. Focus on research very important mm -hmm. and then the second thing be intentional right right now the biggest business in the world globally we know it's it's, it's attention that's why uh, media houses like yourselves pay a lot of money to advertisers because advertisers are selling your attention yeah. or, or the customer's attention rather and uh, 
The thing is, that means so many people are distracted, and because they're distracted, they don't have the focus they need to just start the business. And then they create the excuses that I need capital, I need capital. Let, let, let me bring in Romania. Romania, come on. To sell meat, you literally need money to go and buy the goats and come and slaughter and pay someone else to slaughter for you and, and, and open a butchery. Clearly, Ian is, is lying to us. <laughs> if I was to think in that... Um that line you're trying to take me, <laughs> which I'm not convinced to go through, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be here today. Because mm -hmm. I told you, uh, basically seven years ago, I was worth 3,500. So that's what you started with? That's what I started with. Okay. Yeah. So you agree with Jan? Yes, absolutely. No one is supporting me. Let me bring it. Frida, Frida, what do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying the conversation. Uh, one thing I really like about the human being is diversity and contrast. Mm -hmm. So what I think is, is everyone should choose the path that they need and the path that is going to lead to solving problems. This capital idea, if you don't have the money, there is something you can do for somebody else and get paid, make some money, and then go and do what you want. Why are we always just so stuck in getting the money from our own business? Mm -hmm. If I'm not running the business, I have the time, I have the skill. Jan has a company. Is there something I can do for Jan for an hour or two and make some money? Yeah. Kiprop has a company. Uh, the other guy in Eldorado, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name. He has, he's selling meat. Can I go and sell meat for you? I can do something else temporarily and some money. Because like Jan said, if mm -hmm. you don't have any money of your own, nobody is giving you any more. Because the people that are willing and able to give you money want to grow their money. So why should I give you my money and you cannot grow your own? So people need to understand that. Banks are there to loan money so that they can make more money. You have to show that you have an idea that is making money before somebody can give you money. It's as simple as that. There's Frida. lots of people that are jobless, but there's lots of jobs to do. <laughs> is it okay yeah, to go to the to bank and ask for money that would be my seed capital for the business? You'll be crazy because banks don't give money for seed capital. You're watching too much YouTube. That happens in the U.S., <laughs> not in Kenya. <laughs> and why would you go to the bank to get money to pay them 16% and you're not making any money? How mm -hmm. are you going to pay the bank? Seriously? Yeah. Where are they getting this information from? And that's why we keep saying, don't walk alone. There's enough information for you to run a business in Africa. Yes, you're looking at YouTube and all those wonderful things. It doesn't happen like that in Kenya, but there is a way it can happen in Kenya. Yeah. And there is a way that you can, like at SFA, SME Founders Association, we have a workforce pipeline for young people to be able to serve in small and medium enterprises. And that way they can get paid. You can serve for a week, you can serve for a day. You don't have to go there every day for 30 days, but you can serve consistently every Thursday or every Tuesday doing something you love and enjoy in a small and medium enterprise and getting paid because the small and medium enterprise cannot afford to pay you for 30 days sitting doing nothing so there are many innovative ways of making money if you really want to run a business venture you you are strong you have strength you have a mind there is work for you to do okay. find out sme founders association and you can get access to paid opportunities to get some money to put you on track all right thank you so let's assume that you, all of you guys now have criticized me and finally I've settled on an idea, I've researched, I have the idea, let's say it's a barber shop and I want to do it. But Romania would tell you that when you go into the business, starting the business will start to feel like the easy part and, and, and running is a whole different thing altogether. Sure. How uh, was it like for you? It hasn't been easy because I told you the first thing that I worked on is that I started the uh, honey and meat business. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was where my passion was, agribusiness. Uh, the challenge that comes in about running it, there's a management issue, there's the marketing aspect. You realize um, you're the only employee, you're the yes. digital person, you're the marketing yes. person, you're the CEO, you're yeah. the director, and also Mtu Amkono. At the start, I did all the job. And, 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 and if you, you, you come, you, I think most of you guys have been to Baringo. Yeah. I come from where I started. It's, it's my village, come on. <laughs> um, our mode of operation is a bit different because selling meat and honey, we kind of, we used to hawk. We ran to uh, the moving... Passing uh, vehicles. Passing vehicles, uh, working clients. I mean, you, you had to convince them. So 
that's at the moment that you feel like, oh, it's not as I thought. Yeah. It will be easy as such. But mm -hmm. pressing on and learning to them and maybe now uh, the customer experience comes in now and many other things. The consideration of, um, of having one to provide the best to your customers. I mean, mm -hmm. and the whole experience in it. It's not an easy thing. But mm -hmm. which, as time goes by, as you learn, because I learned through it. I, yeah. went in, I went to eat this when I was very young and green on, on all this. But I was focused and I've done enough research on this. And then the fruits are worth my sacrifice mm -hmm. and time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but if, if you look at it, the problem with, with us is I go into the business today and I want to be Romania tomorrow. We want to <laughs> skip the crawling part. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's impossible. That's, and I, I totally agree with you. There's a challenge with, uh, with patients. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like newborn baby into university. Mm -hmm. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how many hacks you you can't just do it. and if by chance you do manage to get that unicorn business within one year without understanding how it worked then sustainability becomes an issue so a lot of companies you see them on the net some kenyan some african that have got 1 million 30 million 50 million dollars financing these guys have been in business close to 20 years and have been pushing for that financing through so many rounds. Mm -hmm. So you just getting it like that doesn't happen. Uh, a big background for me, I, I was in the corporate for 13 years. Yeah. And I remember saying, okay, now I'll step out and do business because it's always been a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And the MD at the time where I was told me, Jan, I know a guy who sells mandazis in uh, Biashara Street, uh, Kirinyaga Road, sorry, who mm -hmm. can have you for breakfast. What he meant is with that mindset you have, yeah. you're going to fail outside. I've been running my business for seven years now. And I can tell you the first five years was hell. Right now is when I'm saying, oh, okay, things are... And that's because my mindset hadn't shifted, right? I was going in impatient with all these things, and yeah. it, it doesn't work. It's not a respect of persons. Yeah. So patience is key. Romania, I have to take a break, but clearly you, research can only teach you much. Much of it you'd have to learn on the way when you're in the business, isn't it? Yes. Okay. All right. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back... We continue this conversation about starting and running a business. We've spoken about all the challenges that you need to do to start the business. But what happens when you have started it? How do you run it? How do you make it successful? How do you make it more profitable? All that when we come back from this short commercial break. Shopping season is here thanks to Notify Mall. Shop from hundreds of online shops at our mega malls along Moy Avenue in Nairobi and Moy Avenue in Mombasa. Notify Mall, all your favorite online brands under one roof. Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory, you can open an account and lipa pole pole at your convenience? Did you know at Rui Rumabati Factory, you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage? Did you know Rui Rumabati Factory offers free delivery countrywide within 72 hours? Call us now on 0111-050-700. Rui Rumabati Factory. Malisafi kwa beipoa.
Thank you for staying with your world on NTV this morning. We are talking about how you can start your business and grow it into a successful and profitable business. Of course, in the country amid all, amidst all this COVID-19, uh, of course, disruptions in the economy. And with me in studio this morning is Jan Okonji, a startup expert at Sandbox Kenya, as well as Romania Konji, is the founder of Koreama Agro Foods. And joining us online virtually this morning is Frida Winger. She's the advisor for passion to profit that is passion profit welcome back uh, lady and gentlemen allow, allow me to start with you uh frida for this one and this research was done in 2016 i don't think uh, things have changed so much since then as if in any case they might have gotten worse due to the covid 19 pandemic and this research showed that uh, 400 000 smes die every year in fact 400,000 of them don't even get to see their second birthday in business. This is a very grim statistic. It's a grim statistic, but uh, I have a different opinion. Um, that statistic has been like that for a long time about businesses dying before their fifth birthday. And it's important to look and see why are they dying based on that statistic yeah. and then decide that you're going to do things differently. Because I find that statistics are great, but they're not there to alarm us. They're there to help us make better decisions. So at Passion Profit, and just for correction, my company is called Passion Profit. I'm a Passion Profit advisor. Okay. I'm the founder of Passion Profit. So there's a couple of different things going on there. Sorry yeah. if I'm confusing you. But when it comes to statistics, statistics inform us and help us to make better decisions. So. If I'm going to jump into a business, my mindset should be, what do I need to do so that I'm not one of, I don't become the 401, you know, thousand business. Statistic. So one of the things that we do at Passion Profit is that there are three key things that we have discovered makes, make businesses fail. The biggest statistics show that it is access to markets and access to capital. So we have dragged, dug in deeper to see why is there lack, why is there access to mark, why is access to market a problem? Access to market is a problem because number one, the lifestyle of the entrepreneur, not having the right mindset or the right foundation to start the business. And then the second thing is starting a business that does not have a proper value proposition. And a value proposition, like I said earlier, is what is, the, what is your proposition to end somebody's pain and what is your proposition to provide somebody's pleasure so that they can part with their money in exchange for your solution? Mm -hmm. Many people don't think like that, so they're going to end up in that statistic. The other thing is this business that you want to start, do you have enough prospects, enough people that are going to be willing to pay you? And you have to understand when you start a business, they're not going to pay you right off the bat. We talk about you first need to connect with them. They need to know you. They need to like you and trust you. So while that process is happening, what are you going to be doing? All right. You need to be doing something else to ensure there's money coming in mm -hmm. and then you're able to continue running this business. So, yes, it's a grim statistic, but there's a, there, it has been there for a long time. And there's enough companies that are ensuring that there are less people there are less people going to be added on that statistic and more people that are going to make it. The only problem is we don't have enough people doing, putting out research, uh, putting out uh, new information out there to let people know that businesses are making it. And if it was 2016, now we are in 2020. So you're probably going to see those coming up sooner. So you need, you need to be able to have a way to generate cash consistently. You need to have people the right people and processes and it doesn't always mean hiring people for 30 days what is the work that needs to be done which one will you be doing which one will other people do whether they're doing it contractually or full-time and then the cash that you're making needs to have profit and for your cash to have profit we have a very simple formula we use called a three-tier offer to ensure that you have you're always putting you're always putting out offers there are not special offer <laughs> you're putting out offers there to ensure that you're attracting the right prospect you are nurturing them and then you're converting them either to a low tier a mid tier and then the flagship most businesses just have a flagship okay. and there's not enough time to go into it deeply but that is what we look at you have cash you have order and you have stability meaning that the cash you're generating has profit in it and every sale you make can have a profit when you use the profit first methodology, which we teach at Passion Profit.
All right, and, and, and maybe if I can hold you there, Frida, because part of that, f the figure is that 400,000 is because some of them actually don't need to die. They just close shop because, you know, the owner has decided that the expectation, I mean, what is happening and the returns are not matching the expectations. They came in knowing that, you know what, in their first uh, month or two of business, they should be making this amount. But there is that bit or time due in your business where things just don't move as fast as you would want them to. And you see, business is a process. It's very much like farming. You can't be, uh, you can't be, whatever you do, if you're going into business, you must understand it's like farming. You're going to have to sow that seed. You're going to have to water it. You're going to have to remove out the weeds. And the weeds is those good ideas that you thought were going to work, but are not working. So it takes time to figure out the business. I've been doing business in Kenya for, I've been doing passion profit since 2009. What I was doing in 2009, and now is different, but same. Different in the way we are delivering, different in the processes we are using, but we are still doing the same thing, helping people turn their passion into profit. So if you're going to go into business, you must be willing to stay in it for the long haul. You must be willing to try different things before you get the right one that is going to work, not just for you, but also for the people that you are serving. So it takes different dynamics, different people, but the key thing is you want to make sure that whatever it is you're doing is generating revenue to be able to support your operations and your obligations. Okay. Romanya, do you get sometimes friends who get to learn from you, decide that they want to go into business like you, and then they, they quit the next day because you know what? It's not bringing the money. Um, not that I know of. Okay. Because I believe I think I've been a good and a better example for many. Okay. Many have passed through me. Yeah. Others, we still work together. We partner in several other things because I told you we went to many other ventures within the agribusiness sector. And um, some might have been, but you might not realize them. Mm -hmm. Some other you might. But the moment you, they trip a little bit, you know, you always give, you get them that extra eye. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you've committed yourself to mentor others and partner with others, at the time that you realize there's a problem, now the, the, the aspect of the leadership uh, trickle in, that now you need to look at it and try to give a solution. Okay. Because in as much as we are doing this, mm -hmm. it's been a journey of uh, problem solving. Business in itself is a problem solving journey. So in every aspect that you look at it, because much of it has been realization to our success. I did not be focusing on such uh, eventualities, then you wouldn't be where we are right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, maybe, yeah, yeah, and sometimes the problem is the expectations that we come with. Yep, absolutely. I mean, and you, you gave the statistic and, and you also answered the question because is it that the business failed or the owner gave up? <laughs> you know, exactly. That, that, that's, that's, that's the thing that we're really looking at. And right now where we are at the world, thanks to part, partly thanks to the internet, there's been a lot of sharing of information and there's a specific formula to success. And there are people who have that formula to success also because of the experiences they've been through. And if you want your business to be successful, it's all about partnering with those people using those same formulas and getting predictable outcomes. That's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But now we're eclipsed by our own personal bias. So there's something I put on my socials yesterday that we're very quick to learn, but we don't want to be taught. So when you learn, there's that feeling that, yes, I've done it, I got my degree, I got my PhD, I'm top, top, top. But being taught means for you to put aside ego and to allow yourself to be taught. So while well, you're a HR director in a corporate, now you step out to do business, yeah. and your 14-year-old son is telling you, hey, there's TikTok, and it can really help your business, and you're thinking, what do these You don't want to listen to you a five-year-old kid. So you have to, it's not really the business and the environment. You'd be surprised. It's largely about sometimes the mindset. I'll give you one specific formula for success. Um, one way of finding a product or a solution that can really help a market is by simply asking the question to the market or your potential customers, what can I do for you? And you, you'll get a slew of answers. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can actually develop products that people are going to be willing to pay for because they're, they're answering that question, what can I do for you? But what, more often than not, what happens is, especially when we're looking at trends, is we put out products that maybe the customer doesn't even need. So you have opened your kinyozi here. People maybe didn't need your kinyozi. And then, you know, you say the environment, the government, or whatever else. So uh, um, I think really what I'm trying to say with all of this is yeah. getting the right mentor, the coach, the trainer, 
partnering with people who are where you want to be. Okay. And that can really help because they do have that formula. Frida, I do have friends who have indeed started business. They had expectations that in the first or the second years that we should at least grow to this level and that level. And then the business just becomes stunted. It never grows. It never expands. What happens? If it's not growing, if it is not going the way you want, find something else. I often say that business is not a marriage. It's just that it's something that you do. It's only marriage that you are told you, let's do your part. So why are you dying with it? <laughs> so, I mean, that's just on a light note. I believe that as a business owner, you should have some metrics you're measuring. What do you want to achieve every week? What do you want to achieve every day? What do you want to achieve every month? And if you have been doing it for a couple of months and you're not achieving any of those metrics, sincerely, why do you need to continue? And I believe that as long as you're alive and well, and there are other people alive and well on this face of the earth, there's always something more meaningful for you to do. And the fact that it is not working, the world is giving you feedback that there's something else to do. So yeah. why not step back? Find okay. the appropriate help. I think the biggest thing here, find the appropriate help, all right, to help you make the decisions you need to make about your business, and you'll do well. Instead but, of trying to hack it along. But Frida, even, even before we talk about <laughs> quitting the business, there are indeed businesses that are not growing, uh, but not because there's lack of the potential to grow. The potential to grow is indeed there, but it's just with the mistakes that you do as the entrepreneur in terms of growing it. What are those mistakes that you do? Because you don't in... have an accountability. Mm -hmm. The mistakes that you do, number one, you don't have an accountability system. An accountability system is that every day, this is what I need to be doing as a founder, and this is the person holding me accountable. This person could be your board, so that you know that what you're doing is making sense. There's no need of going over and over, you know, like you're on a treadmill and you're not going anywhere. So the first thing you need to have an accountability system. It could be a mentor, it could be a coach, it could be a trusted advisor, it could be a board. So the thing is, there are many options. There's no one size fits all, but you need an accountability system. You need a dashboard. What are the things that you need to be achieving? Are you achieving them? And if you're not achieving them, what, what should you do differently? You cannot do that alone. You need somebody, you know, on, with, working with you. It could be a tr and a trusted advisor has to be somebody who has done this, who knows what it is. And you're telling them, I want to be earning 100,000 a week. And you give them the you give them the the power to yeah. ask you. You didn't earn a hundred thousand this week. What were you doing? Why? And if that doesn't happen, what should we do? It's really that simple, Kipro. Let's okay. not complicate life. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that the, the the point she so makes the first is thing an accountability system. <laughs> And I think, Jan, what I, I, I pick from that is indeed there's, there's a difference between running a business and running one that has direction and yep. one that is uh, becoming successful yep. and becoming profitable. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's businesses have different stages. And uh, even in my company and the other companies who have partnered, with, one, one of the things we do is, of course, we segment them. So, of course, definitely different uh, businesses have different uh, uh, properties and as Frida mentioned it's really a progression so when you're looking at the journey and if you're doing the things right then you do tend to get that growth uh, in terms of the mistakes that the founders make for me it's less about the mistakes uh, they make because you know we will always make mistakes yeah but are you learning from the mistakes mm -hmm. if you learn from the mistakes and they become stepping stones to move you into maybe we can actually stage. ask him the, some of the mistakes that he made initially that he learned from and actually influenced the way the business grew in the latter years uh, I think, um, yeah, we've been to uh, that point, by the way. I think <laughs> for the first uh, three years, yeah. uh, starting, um, we went through uh, bad debts, issues relating to uh, I mean, customer response and experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we always took some criticism, even from customers themselves, but mm -hmm. we, we took them positively. Mm -hmm. um, you could find out maybe at the time that you were starting up, you, you give a client, maybe you, you, you get, he or she get disappointed. Uh, they could not pay you. I mean, others haven't paid for a while. It's creating bad debts. I mean, and you had featured yourself because you're getting into this without further capital. It's all what you had. Mm -hmm. And from the profits that you get now, uh, I mean, doing, uh, using it, recruiting it back again. So after all these realizations, uh, we learn a lot through it. So 
we basically took them as lessons. Mm -hmm. Did you have any and, point? Yeah. And uh, my starting point is that, as in how I agree with it is that I used uh, referrals mm -hmm. rather than advertisement and many others. I used, I used customer referrals. Mm -hmm. So wherever there is a problem, I could face it easily. And um, as I told you earlier, my mode of operation as of, of the start is that I looked for, I had um, a clientele base of 50 clients whom I've retained to date. Yeah. That's where I started. And it grew uh, enormously, mm -hmm. ten, tenfold. Mm -hmm. I mean, and by any time that there's a problem, I could trace it easily. Okay. And whatever I trace it, I always solve it. I always look as much as possible. In yeah. as much as maybe I goes, it's something I was gray on it. Yeah. I mean, I went through it, uh, to it and learning through experience. So yeah. you could understand there was room for many mistakes. And there's I definitely did. someone who's watching right now and they probably started during the same year you started. Their business is still in that very same backyard where they started. And they're looking at you. You have expanded. You're now into wheat farming, literally grown by, uh, you know, leaps and bounds. And they're wondering, what difference did he do? What, 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 what is the different thing that he did? Uh, positive customer experience. Mm -hmm as in positive feedback. I mean, and as you get your, 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 your feedback from clients, as the earliest to sort them out in a positive uh, manner, the better. Mm -hmm. That's all I have done. Mm -hmm. Because getting, as in, I always get in touch with my clients. I always get in touch. I mean, as much as that, now it's grown, because now we act on delegation and many other things, but I'm always very closely monitoring each and every aspect that I do in a daily, on a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. So, Jan, then, so mine is the business that got stuck. How do I take it to the next level, to Romania's level? Um, uh, well, I think first of all, and, and this is the, the tough part because I've also been there. My business, <laughs> my business got stuck. It's feeling personal. Uh, why I, 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 <laughs> I, I put in uh, money for an app. Apps mm -hmm. were really hot at that time. Yeah. 20, to create an app? So, to create an app and yeah. we developed it and it was a great app. But I didn't get money from it. I lost um, I had a company that was willing to, to buy it from me, and I thought, oh, I can do it myself. And I lost out on a potential deal, and I continued making these mistakes. Uh, but how I managed to pivot or to start making money or improving my business was to um, just bite the bullet, go back, understand where I made the mistakes. A large part, I agree with Romania, was coming from customer feedback. Yeah. And slowly by slowly correcting. So part of the reasons that the businesses don't uh, pick up after they've made some uh, crippling mistakes is that we don't have that humility to go back, admit, and then start making those small adjustments. Sometimes they could be painful because you have an emotional attachment to your product or brand. Yeah. Somebody says, change this color from black to this, move from this location to this. And you have to also have some sense of wisdom from the advice you get. You can't just get <laughs> advice from everyone. Yeah. But what needs to happen is you need to learn from the challenges you have made. And I, 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 I won't pretend, you won't learn overnight. Yeah. Yeah? Sometimes it's going to take, for me, it took years. But that's the only way to get out of that rut. Okay. Yeah. Fred, allow me to read uh, some few tweets here that, uh, that, that were sent out uh, by people who, of course, had very bad experiences with the regulations and the licenses and the permits that sometimes are demanded for you to operate a business. And uh, this is at Business 254 saying, those asking, here are the 14 licenses to, uh, you need to operate a hotel in Kenya. Of course, we need to verify this, but we're talking about 14 different uh, licenses that you need from, I don't know, the county government, the national government, music, co music copyright, NEMA, health uh, department, uh, the business permit itself, uh, something about a liquor permit, uh, fire inspection, uh, and the workspace regulation, and many others. And Alex George was talking about, I started a wine and, wines and spirit, but closed at after only three months. The liquor license, Pekeake, they were demanding 50,000 shillings. Frida, so, sometimes you can't help but feel that the, the, the regulatory environment is also a bit uh, unfriendly. And uh, of course, it seems unfriendly, because we live to the pieces pieces of information and not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're part, I'm part of KEPSA, I'm the vice chair of SME club at KEPSA. And one of the things we do at KEPSA is work on the, 
work on policies that can help the regulatory framework. It doesn't happen overnight. And we always invite people, you know, we have different kinds of surveys going on that we invite people to respond to. So the more we are able to participate in such, you know, such activities, the better we are able to inform government what is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. We are aware it will not happen overnight. And I'm not speaking here as KEPSA. I'm just letting you know that there are frameworks out there to make a difference. However, this person starting the liquor store or the restaurant needs to count the cost before they start. And part of counting the cost is finding out what is the legitimization process for you to be able to run a diff whatever kind of business that you want to run. And okay. before you jump in, you have to make up your mind, I'm going to be willing to do those things or not, because that is what it is right now. Is it always going to be like that? I don't know, and I hope not, because there's lots of work going on in the background to change the things. So again, jumping into things without research, jumping into things without mentorship is going to hurt you. There's lots of information available at KEPSA, at Sandbox, at Passion Profit, at SME Founders Association. The government is trying to set up something called net, uh, SME Networks of Networks. So there's help available. Let's not make it look like we are helpless and Kenya is not doing well. Uh -uh. Kenya is getting better and better. And there's lots of help. Do not struggle on your own. Find the help. I think you're almost pointing to the need for, for research and training so that you understand the legal and regulatory environment you're going to, to, to operate in because most, most people just go in blindly. And then there's, a, there's something that, the, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. there's a research that was done and actually there's a toolkit that has been set out there that was created by um, UK, UK Tech Hub. UK Kenya Tech Hub or something like that, and it's online, and it shows what are the different things that you need to start a business. It's a toolkit, and it had to be done by United Kingdom for us here in Kenya, but the truth is it is there. You don't have to do things on your own. Find appropriate help. I can tell you many places. SME Club, KEPSA, Sandbox, SME Founders Association, uh, SCC Center, uh, SME Support Center, there are many places you can get help, people. Let's not walk alone. All right. Thank you. And of course, we have to wrap this conversation because we're running out of time. But um, allow me to take your parting shots, gentlemen, and I'll start with you, Romania. There's definitely another young person who's watching us this morning and they're wondering, I want to be you. I want to be like him. How do I become him? Talk to, uh, look at the camera and talk to the people who are indeed watching you this morning and they're wondering, how do I take that first step and become, perhaps get to the level that you are in? Uh, the first step is um, getting out of the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, you normally need to hang the boots. Get on your boots, get out of your comfort zones, uh, hum with your idea, and start, start going. Look for people, look for partners, like me and many others outside there. Ask them out. We, uh, basically, uh, we are out there. I mean, it's it's never as in with a price. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we we are here to help mm -hmm. because much of where we are, it's been a journey too. That most of other people have helped us by buying our products and and, and mentoring us through. Uh, because I had people I was looking up to as well, and um, that's the only thing. And, and keeping the focus, the the discipline, the, the money discipline, the focus. I mean getting the customer's feedback and acting on them promptly. Have you been tempted at some point to take out money from the business to, for your yes. other side? For uh, the first three years, I told, you, I told you, for the first three years, we messed up. Mm -hmm. I really messed up. Yeah. I, it got to a point I was almost going down, but I woke up again. I mean, I saw it as it was a red flag. I saw a red flag and said, let me go back to the basics. I went back and in, from that time now, it's been uh, another four, five years. I mean, it's, it's been a wonderful, a thrilling experience, yeah. but a more encouraging one. And it, it gives me more reasons because as time goes by, because I learned to solve more problems, because it's, it's uh, the aspect of many man, making this making money in, in meat, honey, honey and meat business and most other agribusiness was, uh, I saw a niche to, to offer solutions. Yeah. And that is where my focus has always been. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, well, if you're a young person and you're in business, what I'd say is uh, have the right structures, uh, be intentional, focus on your mindset, 
And beyond those fancy words, the, the real deliverable I'd say is watch the company you keep. You're the average of the five people you hang out with. Yeah? So if four people are broke, you, you know, <laughs> what trend you are You are getting personal. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the risk of being demolished by KOT, yeah. Twitter is a very good platform though, but I rarely see a lot of solutions on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So if you are in business and rather than whining on Twitter, uh, there's, there's LinkedIn, there the are platforms where you can go and partner with people and get real solutions. It's very easy for us to point out problems. I mean, anyone can do that. Yeah. But for business, you make your money when you provide the solution. Okay. And of course, you, you didn't mention that indeed for those who are struggling, there are programs that you even offer. At, the uh, programs the definitely I, that we offer the Sandbox, uh, of which I'm part of the Sandbox, and also in my personal company, Business Growth Solutions. And uh, you can reach out to me on my socials and uh, I'll definitely get back to you, direct you to the right people you need or support you myself. Uh, I do that with a number of hundreds of startups yeah. uh, I, I assist. So uh, we're at the Sandbox with Frida. We also have our own companies. Uh, they could reach out to us via Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those, and we'll definitely support them. Yeah, so that's it. And how, what difference does it make if they, they come to you? Oh yeah, I'll definitely, I'll go all out. I'll definitely support them. I mean, I, I don't have any bias. So all right. just like Romania said, um, I'm all open to helping new business people. So at Sandbox on Twitter, that's the account? Uh, well, if they just Google Jan Okonji, they'll mm -hmm. somehow find me and, you know, just Google all my socials and reach out. Okay. Yeah, it's quite, quite direct. All right. Yeah, and, and they'll reach out to the, I'll definitely direct them to the Sandbox. Okay. And if we want to access your products, how do we do that? Uh, you can access my product, Korea Agri Foods, or they can get Korea Mahani on, 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 on Facebook. Yeah. Korea Mahani official on, on, on Instagram. And okay. All right. Allow me to close with Frida. Frida, just give us your closing remarks for this conversation for anyone who's watching today, whether they are an entrepreneur, aspiring entrepreneur, they want to go into business, whether they are already into business but they're thinking of expanding, whether they are expanding but they really want to see um, it bringing more returns. Thank you so much for having me today. The key thing I'd say is that we need to be patient for growth. Business is like a baby. The things that you teach the child when they're young, they will not depart from it when they're old. So be patient for be patient for growth and impatient for profit because business you're supposed to be putting in money and getting back your money and some more. There are ways to do that. If you don't know how to do it, find the appropriate help. Mm -hmm. You can find me. I won't be the one that is going to help you. I'll show you different people that can help you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And of course, that's where, of course, we wrap this conversation. But before I let you go, Frida, how do they access, of course, part of the products that you offer and the training? Thank you so much, uh, Jan. You can find me on Facebook, Frida Owinga. That's the same name I use on Facebook, on LinkedIn, anywhere on social media. Thank you. All right, that's where we have to leave it this morning. We have been talking about starting and running your business in Kenya and making it as profitable as you can. And of course, many thanks to my guests this morning. Uh, Jan Okonji is a startup expert with Sandbox here in Kenya. Romania Konji is the founder of Koreama Agro Foods, as well as Frida Winger, who is a passion profit advisor. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we continue talking about business, but the aspect of asset leasing and what it means for your business. Is it cost effective? Does it bring the efficiency that we talk about? And we come back from this commercial break. Don't go too far. <laughs>